Now on BBC Two, a look at what the papers say. This week, what the papers say is presented by Paul Foote, columnist on the Daily Mirror. Good evening. Here are some important words of advice to journalists who are thinking of meddling in the business of the law courts. They were handed down by Lord Denning, one of our most famous judges, in an interview three years ago in the Irish Times. I draw the line, and I think most judges would draw the line after a decision has been given by judge and jury. The media must not go around trying to get what they call fresh evidence so as to show, if they can, the decision was wrong. That is undermining our system of justice altogether. All this week, our system of justice has been undermined. The newspapers have been full of it. The Birmingham Six. New freedom bid by Irishmen jailed for pub bombs. Detectives were liars. Police made up IRA confessions. That was that well-known underminer of our system of justice, the Daily Express, on Tuesday. The Daily Mail was at it, too. This grave injustice that sent six to jail. And The Guardian. Bombs evidence withheld from jury. In fact, all the papers, with the exception of the loyal son, which didn't seem to notice the appeal case was on, were undermining away to their heart's content. One reason for the unanimity was that everyone expects the case of the Birmingham Six to end very soon. As the Financial Times put it, the men's release is now regarded as a formality. Looking back at the newspapers on the conviction of the six men in August 1975 is a frightening experience. Everything was hate and horror. The guilty! That was the front page of the Daily Mirror. Inside, a four-page supplement was dominated by headlines like these. Brotherhood of Blood. Bombs gang get justice. The Daily Telegraph had a long and lurid account under the headline The Bungled Revenge by the Friends of James McDade. Even the normally sceptical Guardian was in no doubt at all. Anatomy of a Death Squad. The certainty of it all was hardly surprising. The Birmingham bombs had killed 21 people, the biggest mass murder in British history. Outrage mingled with relief that the bombers were behind bars. In Ireland, there were a few faint noises of dissent. Three weeks after the verdict, the investigative magazine Hibernia published this. Behind the Birmingham Bombs Trial. By Jacqueline Kay. The long article ended. It may be that we will never get any nearer the truth than the words of John Walker, smuggled out of prison in a note. Put up job. Scapegoats. Could not release men. Had to charge. Too badly beaten. In March 1976, the Irish press correspondent in London, David Brazil, went to Birmingham to interview the wives of the six men. He concluded... Meanwhile, the wives of five of the men, Mrs Walker was always, as is her husband, somewhat detached from the others, carry on their determined belief in their men's innocence. None of this was even noticed by British newspapers. Then, in 1977, two priests in Belfast published this... The Birmingham Framework. By Father Dennis Fall, Father Raymond Murray. The first headline made what was then a fantastic claim. Six innocent men. Terrible incidents often result in serious consequences to other innocent people in the vicinity. A chance of history, a coincidence of facts, can result in other innocent people having their lives and those of their families destroyed in the vortex of the whirlpool. We think this has happened as a result of the Birmingham bombings. For 82 fascinating pages, the pamphlet ripped apart the prosecution case at the trial. Fathers Fall and Murray sent their pamphlet round the British newspapers. No one responded, or almost no one. The exception was this young man. Chris Mullin. The byline was big enough, but the journalist was small change. Chris Mullin was a lowly news sub-editor for the BBC World Service. He sent this article to the small circulation left-wing weekly Tribune, who published it on the 14th of October 1977, Thirteen and a half years ago. The Birmingham bombings. Did the police get the right culprits? The article was a review of the Birmingham framework. It concluded... Whatever happens, this case should not be allowed to drop from the public eye. Well, it was allowed to drop from the public eye. In 1980, there was a brief flicker of interest. One of the country's top investigative reporters, David Lee, then writing in The Guardian, announced... Smoke tests cloud the evidence in IRA pub bombers case. David Lee introduced a new forensic expert to challenge the grease test, which was set at the trial to have found traces of explosives on the men's hands. Who cared? The London-based Irish Post cared. Forensic test now admitted faulty. And later that year, 1980, remember, the London listings magazine Time Out cared. The Birmingham pub bombing. Who really did it? 
But no one else in the media bothered at all. They were all listening, perhaps, to the warning of Lord Denning that searching around for fresh evidence in decided cases undermines our system of justice. Did I say all? Well, all except that subversive mole, Chris Mullin, who'd become editor of Tribune and was pu printing articles like this. High six innocent Irishmen were convicted of the Birmingham pub bombing. By Patrick Hill, now serving life imprisonment for a crime he says he didn't commit. Mr Hill concluded, We now need a miracle to prove our innocence. Chris Mullin didn't agree. He thought an investigative journalist might succeed where miracles usually fail. He wrote again and again to many such journalists, including me, begging us to look closely into the case of the Birmingham Six. All of us turned him down. He would not give up. He concentrated on Granada Television's world in action, which finally relented. They hired forensic scientists to carry out independent tests. In late October 1985, the program, In the Interests of Justice, was broadcast. Writing in The Listener, World in Action reporter Charles Tremaine explained the tests of one of the scientists, Dr. Brian Caddy. He asked an assistant to shuffle a pack of cards and waited for a while. Then he swabbed the assistant's hands in the same way that Dr. Skews had performed the grease test at Morecambe Police Station. Again, the sample turned pink. The men could have been incriminated not on evidence of nitroglycerin, but from the nitrocellulose off the playing cards. This was devastating to the prosecution case ten years previously. The Home Office set up an inquiry, but again, no one in the media took much notice. Chris Mullin wrote a book, Error of Judgment, which was published in 1986. Mullin found a new witness, and World in Action made another programme, and at last, journalists and editors started to take some notice. In 1987, the Home Secretary referred the case to the Court of Appeal. Three solemn judges sat listening to all the new evidence for several weeks. When they declared that the men were guilty after all, it seemed as if Lord Denning had been right all along. The Daily Express thought so anyway. Justice has been done. The Express was delighted. Express opinion. Guilty. The only verdict. The six Birmingham pub bombers did not lack for champions determined to assert their innocence. Newspaper articles? Newspaper articles. Is there anything more disgustingly undermining? Yes, there is. Books and television documentaries were devoted to challenging the evidence that it was they who planted the bombs that killed 21 people at the Mulberry Bush and Tavern in the Town public houses in November 1974. Now, after the costliest criminal appeal in legal history lasting 28 days, the court has given its verdict, the original verdict, guilty. The Daily Telegraph described the judge's decision as... A convincing refutation of the allegations that their confessions were extracted by police brutality. The Sun rejoiced. Joy, as IRA bombers are kept in prison. On its front page, the Sun homed in on a familiar figure. Loony MP backs the IRA pub bombing monsters. Looney MP? Who could that be? Here's the answer in the Sun's leader column a few months later. Mr. Odious. Is there a more odious MP in the Commons than left-winger Chris Mullin? Yes, that BBC News sub was now an MP. But outside the Looney Sun, the line had been broken. The independent front page announced... Irish reject pub bomb verdicts. The Times made the same point. Irish anger as pub bombers lose appeals. In Ireland, where the newspapers in general are far better informed and more, more alert than in Britain, the reaction was almost unanimous. The Irish Independent had... Six verdict leads to widespread outrage. And the Irish press demanded... Think again. Critical feature articles started to appear in newspapers which had never before questioned the verdict. Robert Key attacked the appeal judges in, of all papers, the Times. Three unwise judges. The Sunday Times recruited Ludovic Kennedy, who was educated at Eton, as many judges are, and who writes about them with patrician contempt. I accuse. For the judges to declare, in the light of all they have heard, that the original verdicts were safe and satisfactory seems to me an abuse of the English language as well as an insult to anyone's intelligence. The once unanimous view that the men were obviously guilty was confined by now to a handful of eccentrics. But how to change the verdict? The loony MP, who had single-handedly caused this great shift in opinion, stuck to his guns, and so did Granada Television. In March last year, they broadcast a huge two-hour doc drama documentary called Who Bombed Birmingham? The Daily Mail, loyal to law and order to the last, proclaimed... TV show claims fail to clear six, say police. But the balance had shifted again. The Daily Mirror, for instance, devoted almost an entire page to the programme. Trial and error, Birmingham Six were the wrong men locked away. Richard Ingrams wrote in his column in The Observer... In answer to Granada TV's programme last week on the Birmingham Six, the Prime